Yo, what up, guys? Back at it with another video. Um, I usually don't put out content back to back days, but with the recent signing that just happened today, I had to get it out to you guys. Uh, Rafael Devers signing an 11 year deal worth 331 million dollars to stay with the Red Sox. Um, to say the Red Sox have had a confusing offseason would be putting it lightly, frankly. Um, they lose Bogarts, they lose Nathan Yobaldi, but they go out and sign Masataka Yoshida and Devers to this monster extension. So, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, frankly, but again, he's a he's a top five talent in baseball, and I guess they didn't want him going anywhere. So they did what they had to do. I like that signing for them, but again, I don't know what they're doing. This is a very very confusing off season to diagnose for them. I wonder if they can. Make a run at Shohei Otani. Is that what they're um? Is that what they're uh talking about with Devers as like another piece to surround him with? Because then I would understand that that would be a long shot. But again, right now. He's their only piece along with the aging Trevor story. But for me, the Red Sox have no pitching whatsoever with the loss of your Waldy, and you can't trust Chris Sale. They're fielding calls, to tr calls for him to get traded. So I don't really know who their ace is going to be, so I don't know about that. But once they signed Devers today, I wonder if they're really considering signing Shoei Otani um, because, frankly, I don't think just Devers' story and Yoshida is enough. That fan base... Needs another star to to get them going and uh have faith in that front office again. Um, I agree with the fact that once they lost Bogarts, the fan base erupted and uh really called for Heimblum's job. Uh, because Bogarts was a really good player for them, and frankly, I was shocked that they let him go when I first heard, heard it, but I get it, that was an incentive, uh, if the fans being mad at them was an obvious incentive to sign Devers to this extension, but again, I don't know who they're gonna get to surround him, I think Otani would make a lot of sense. Um, but we'll see what they do, man. That was just a crazy signing today. Because I really thought that he was going to hit free agency at the end of this season. Um, and it just came out also today that the Cubs made another move, that move and signed Eric Hosmer. So they're making a lot of moves. Obviously, uh, Jameson Tyone, uh, then to be Swanson, obviously, who can shore up their left side of the infield. He's a great young shortstop. And uh, now Eric Hosmer, who will probably play first base or DH for them. I'm not entirely sure. 
But they've made great moves this offseason, man. Bolstering their rotation. Uh, signing one of the top tier shortstops. And um, signing a proven veteran that we know can handle their pressure and perform in big moments when needed. So, in regards to the Yankees... Um, I, I still really hope we can get Brian Reynolds. I'm one of those people that think he will get traded before spring training because I just don't see him lasting on Pittsburgh until the deadline. A lot of people do seem to think that he'll last before the deadline and then we can make a move to trade for him once that start being put up but I just don't see him being in Pittsburgh long term at all so um the Mariners and Dodgers are threats to us with the Mariners having the edge because frankly they have what Pittsburgh wants uh top pitching prospects like Logan Gilbert um, Matt Brash, I think was a converted starter that went to the bullpen, so Pittsburgh can try to convert him back into a starter, because he has some nasty stuff. So it's 99 at the top of the zone, and uh, has a white lot slider, so I think the Mariners do have the upper hand. But I really hope that Cashman could swing a deal for him, whether that means be giving up Jason Dominguez, which I know he has all the talent in the world, but we have to give up something to get a player as good as Brian Reynolds, while well, not a superstar. He's as close to being right on the fringe of one as there is. So I would be willing to part ways with Jason Dominguez because I think Brian Reynolds may be a little higher as his ceiling, but not much higher. So I would be willing to part ways with Dominguez, uh, Clayton Beater. Apparently this guy's a stud that we got um, in the Joey Gallo trade. He's a stud pitcher, but again, that's what Pittsburgh wants to acquire in a, in a deal, then we have to part ways. Uh, Will Warren could be another guy that we could trade. He is also a highly thought of prospect. It makes you, it makes you a little mad that, well, at the time, I thought it was a good move. Just like I thought Sonny Gray was a good move back then. And look what happened. But at the time, I thought it was a good move to acquire Frankie Montas at the trade deadline last season for J.P. Sears and Ken Walderchuk. But if we had held on to them, then I feel like we could have definitely swung a deal for Reynolds. Because Sears and Waldachuk were two of our best pitching prospects that had a lot of upside. I feel like we could have really used them to swing a deal for a position of need in Brian Reynolds. By the way, do you guys see my chain? Do you like the new drip? Yeah, I got it for Christmas. It's, uh, it's cool. I haven't taken it off since. Thank you to my uncle and aunt and cousins for getting me that.